summer camp is a three level preparation course for the Cambridge Young Learners uh, tests, assessment tests. Those of you who are familiar with this will know that there are three levels in, in CYLET, starters, which is pre-A1, movers and flyers. These courses are for children aged six to 10. The three levels, as I said, prepares children for the Cambridge test. There's at least 40 hours of classwork at each level, but actually there are so many projects and so on that you can spend a lot more time if you have more time available. Each unit follows the same pattern and I'll explain that uh, briefly as we go on. I think this, this uh, approach is quite important. Um, I don't know what your experience has been, but I've had some experience with courses for young learners where I didn't have any idea what was going on on an individual page. I had to look very, very closely at accompanying teacher's notes uh, or try and work out from the rubrics what was happening. I wanted to avoid that with this material. We have a colorful design, obviously engaging activities. If learning is not fun for young learners, then learning won't take place. So the first principle has got to be, will this be fun? And that's what we've tried to do with this course. We bring in cartoon characters from around the world for children to identify with. We use high quality photographs to bring the world into the classroom, but we also use illustrations to make vocabulary fun and easy to remember. One problem with photographs is that they are too detailed. In many cases, if you try to teach a vocabulary item through a photograph, you will not, it will not be clear enough what the target item is. So I, in many cases to teach vocabulary, uh, the uh, illustration is easier. This is what I meant about individual uh, lessons, or rather, this is what I mean about a clear repetitive approach. We have individual lessons. Each one of those, one, two, three, four, is one lesson, one 35, 45 minute lesson, which enables just a pick up and go approach. You know, every time you turn over, you're doing something new. So you don't have to worry too much about where exactly you are in the section or in the book. Those of you who know the Cambridge tests will be aware that they are vocabulary driven. Vocabulary is the key element in the Cambridge uh, young learners tests. You don't, they don't have a pass fail. Again, you probably know they don't have a pass fail, but a child only gets a good grade if they have a rich vocabulary uh, from the, the target set for each level. So you can see there in one section of, the, of, of this book, we teach the vocabulary themes, clothes, colors, food and drink, school and time. And in another one, we teach health, places and directions, sports and leisure, time again, and weather. There's a series of warm-up lessons to prepare the children for the themes. There are words and sentences lessons which introduce the key vocabulary and patterns. There's a section, there are sections which we call magic time, which present the key phonological and spelling features of English. Uh, it is a spoken test, it is a written test, so you must teach your, your children to spell correctly as well as to speak correctly. We teach grammar in a fun way here with matching of words and pictures. Uh, what are the people, what are the animals doing? Uh, what have the people got or what can the children do? And then we present the uh, syntactic patterns in tables. We lay them out as subject, verb, object, and so on, but we don't teach those words. They don't even appear on the page. We debated whether to use the, the terminology, present simple, present continuous, and so on. In the end, we decided we had to, uh, for the teacher, really, not for the, the child. Listening comes next with many tasks, including some tasks that you might recognize from the test itself at each level. Speaking is practiced with a range of tasks, including a key one which recurs in every section, mix and mingle. The children have to get up 
And generally speaking, they have to do some kind of survey, go around and ask other people in the class uh, information for information and uh, write it down on a, a chart in a table. The beauty of mix and mingle like this is A, it gets the children up and moving. B, it is recurrent, recurrent patterns. They have to use the same pattern again and again and again, but in a communicative way. So it's not just chanting the pattern like we used to do with old fashioned drilling. They, they're repeating the pattern because they have to repeat the pattern in order to ask eight people uh, about their, uh, what will you do at the weekend? Will you see your friends? Will you go shopping? There are stories hopefully quite funny stories for the children to laugh at, where the characters that I mentioned at the beginning uh, get themselves into various uh, funny or difficult situations and have to solve problems to get out of them. Reading is practiced through test type tasks. Writing is practiced through mini texts, but also Reba sentences. Um, I love these. I, th I think they uh, really mimic what should be going on in the brain of, of a, a person producing language. Some of these may not make immediate sense to you, but bear in mind, the children are only shown these rebus sentences, that is sentences with words and pictures. They're only shown these when they've done the story already. They know what the people said in the story. So they know that the teacher in that first example there said, we are going by bus to the train station. Then we are catching a train. They know that she said, we're going to the zoo by bus. So the pictures are prompts, the words are prompts, but the child has to reconstruct the whole form from the word and picture prompts. As I say, I think it mimics real life usage real life language production. Sorry, writing is also practiced through test type tasks. Those of you who are familiar with these exams will recognize these two types of tasks. And then we finish with a series of wrap up activities which remind children of the key vocabulary and the patterns from the unit, which is the odd one out, beef, lamb, pork, fish, and why is it the odd one out? a whole range of wrap-up activities, that's just one type. And then a mind map, which brings together the vocabulary and attempts to organize it. Uh, we're not absolutely sure even now how the brain, the human brain organizes language, but there seems to be uh, enough evidence from psycholinguistics that mind maps are one way in which information, vocabulary information is stored. In other words, there are linkages made between the hyponym and the hypernym, the, the overall thing like fruit and the individual items like banana, apple. So if we can mimic that again, perhaps we are mimicking to some extent the way that vocabulary is stored in, in the brain. There are tests at the end of each unit which are which exactly mimic the way that Cambridge decides to test the four skills. Those are the two presentations.